States. You've been to Colombia, Brazil, Paraguay, and Paraguay, and Argentina, and soon Bolivia. So I'm in Bolivia. We had, he's heading to Bolivia with me, so I won't be alone this time, you guys. So um, let's go over dating in each country. Give me a generalized statement of what it was like for you to date in Argentina. I only did like 10 days in Argentina, but I thought Argentina was going to be harder because I lived in Miami for a while and there's a shit ton of Argentinians. Yeah. But when I, I didn't go to Buenos Aires. See, you guys are all going to go to fucking Buenos Aires. I went to another city, which I'm not even going to name it, but just a second tier city. And, uh, you know, I, all I did was get on Tinder and I went out with a good amount of girls and got sex and. It was easier than I thought because people were telling me like, oh, those girls want to make you wait. But for me, it was like all first date sex. So they weren't flaky at all. They were flaky. They were flaky. So how many times did you have to set a date when you were in that city in Argentina before you actually got to meet with them? See, what I do is all fucking. Sorry to interrupt today's podcast. I hope you guys are enjoying the information. This will be a three part podcast. By the way, if you want to watch the entire podcast, the entire podcast will be on Patreon. Now, if you guys like what you're hearing and you plan on traveling to Latin America, guys, we have made travel guides for all of these countries. For example, Buenos Aires, Salvador Bahia, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Montevideo, Paraguay. Anywhere you want to go in South America, we have a travel guide for you. All you have to do is click the link below. It's a link tree link. Click the link. Go to the website. Even Santiago is on there. There's a Santiago travel guide. Click that link. By the travel guide, you'll know exactly where to go, exactly what you need to do, exactly what you need to avoid, exactly how much you should plan to spend. You guys, it is basically buying a consultation without having to talk to me on the phone, without having to pay a high price like $150 or even more. You can get it all for as low as $20. And if you are on Patreon, you can get it as low as $10. So make sure you guys guarantee yourself an amazing trip to one of these countries and buy yourself a travel guide. And do not forget to get the free Digital Nomad Starter Kit. Guys, I'm putting in a lot of work. I'm having to hire virtual assistants to help me do some of this work so I can continue to bring you guys more valuable content. If you really wanna support this content, besides hitting the cash app, I wanna give you guys value. So buy one of these digital products that I've made just for you. Let's get back to the video. Before I go to a city, I'll set my Tinder location there and start talking to a, as many girls as I can possibly handle. Mm -hmm. And then just tell them all, like, I want to meet up with you and, like, keep the conversation going. And what I'll do in a place where I know it's flaky or I've heard that it's flaky is I'll set up, like, two or three dates for the same night. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then just flake on with them. Okay. That's kind of what I did. And some of them I didn't. If it's, like, a really hot chick, I'll be like, you know what, I'm going to take a chance with this but they were in argentina the girls that were interested started doing shit like calling me they were like let's get on facetime so we know clear indicators of interest yeah okay so but it's not as bad as like people like i've heard a lot of people say argentina they hated dating in argentina for some reason yeah so when i was in buenos aires i there was plenty of beautiful women there. Um, I wouldn't put them at the top of the list for South America, but there was plenty of beautiful women there, fit women. Uh, if you like surgery and stuff like that, they had that there too. And they would be friendly to talk to. And I didn't really get any, you know, some black people like to say it was racist. I didn't experience that really at all from the women in Argentina until the last time I was at the airport uh, a few weeks ago. But I wasn't there. That was just at the airport. Wait, what happened there? Yeah, the 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 chick, I don't know if I misunderstood. I didn't now one it may have been a misunderstanding. <laughs> no. The other one, the other one was for sure some bullshit. Like I was going through immigration and she was so smiley and helping me and enthusiastic. And she walked over here, she grabbed her coworker to take me to the uh checkpoint I needed to go to. And she was like, Hey, nigga. And I was like, <laughs> and I, I was like, Maybe it's because Spanish is my third language. Maybe they she call each other that in, in Colombia. But in TikTok, they said if somebody calls you nigga, then it's just it's not in an offensive way. And I thought about it and they said I was like she was nice. Maybe I don't know. But then we can't. I can't say anything because we say it in our music, so you can't really get too offended. Yeah, but it's their language. Yeah, and it's their it is their language too. So you you never know what, but. I let that, I brushed that one off. <laughs> I went to the restaurant. Yeah, I went to the uh, the Outback Steakhouse. And 
I asked the lady, hey, can I uh, have a table here? She's like, oh, none of the tables are available. The bar is available. Oh, shit. And so I looked around, and all the tables were either occupied or dirty. I went and sat at the bar. No problem. I just want to eat. I don't care anyway. I don't need a table. That would just been cool. There's an older white guy behind me, probably 60 years old, and he said the same thing. Hey, table for one. Okay, give me one second. Let me literally fucking instantly. Let me clean the table off. And I was like, that dude was right behind me. Why mm. didn't she say that? I don't give a fuck. Whatever. But yeah. I just noticed it. I would still go back to Argentina, but I just took note of that. Uh, but the women, and back to what I was saying, the women in Argentina, they would show high interest and they would converse with me and text me, set up a date, disappear the day of the date. They'll tell you that there too. Like, this is normal. Everybody yeah. cancels all the time. They're yeah. like, what's the problem? I mean, that's a, that is a, a thing in Argentina. Yeah, even when I tried to get an apartment here in Paraguay, uh, here at the Sky Tower, it was owned by Argentine, and literally she had me pay in cash. I got all the way to the Western Union. I seen the apartment, got all the way to the Western Union, had the agent ready to, he had the papers ready for me to sign, and then literally I'm like, okay, I'm about to come over there to drop off the money and sign the paperwork. She changes her mind. Okay, sorry, you guys. We had to go inside the apartment. It's like 105 degrees here in Asuncion. But we were talking about that Argentinian, Argentine women will disappear right before the date. They'll show super high interest right in your face, and then they'll disappear, and then they'll hit you up the next day. Yeah, they'll like, keep going. Like, oh, like, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, what do you mean what's going on? Like, you didn't see that I reached out to you yesterday. We had plans. And you, like you were saying, people in Argentina say that, oh, this is normal. Like, that's just I, a normal thing. I think what it is, man, like, is they have a lot of friends there. Like, their their friend group is, like, really big. Mm -hmm. And, like, uh, there's just a lot of plans, especially big cities. That's what you're uh, up against is, like, there's always a concert. There's always somebody's birthday. Like, it's a big city. But the, I think that's their culture is, like, friends are really important. So they fucking cancel on you. But they'll keep talking to you. It doesn't mean it's over. It's just like you're going to have to get in. Or just, I think it's also normal for you to cancel. I think the next time I go there, I'll just be like, oh, sorry, I made other plans. I thought, I thought, I thought it was normal here. That's what you guys told me. So, But there's plenty of girls there, man. And it's not like dealing with the Argentinian girls in Miami. Because those chicks, as soon as they get off the plane, like give them two weeks and she's fucking, she's a Miami girl now. Yeah, so you think chicks, South American, Latinas going to Miami changes majority of them almost instantly. Yeah, we met that girl. I met that girl in the mall here in Paraguay, and she spoke English, and she's like, yeah, I've lived in Miami for two years. Like, She, she sounded American. She started flirting with me with that like banter shit that American girls do. Yeah. We're, we're like talking shit to each other. And that's fun for a few minutes, and then after a while, it gets stressful. It like, was cool. I liked it because it was like, oh, yeah, I remember this, like the witty banter. But I was like, yeah, this girl is, um, she's Miami girl now. Yeah. Okay. So what would you say dating in Colombia was like? How would you generalize dating in Colombia? Man, okay. So there's some really good girls in Colombia. Um but there's like they're they're a little bit two faced there. Like you got the the super good like from a good family Catholic girls that you're gonna have to go on like three dates with to fuck, and then there's the the gold diggers and the prostitutes. Like there's girls in Colombia that you'll be going out with for weeks, and then all of a sudden she'll ask for like uh, cinquenta mil, which is like ten dollars or some shit. Mm -hmm. And you'll be like, okay, whatever, here's a little, little lunch money. But then she'll keep asking for that. And then she might even like increase it. Like they'll try to see what they they can get out of you. They're not necessarily a prostitute, but like they think that's normal. Like you'll, you'll tell them like, look, this is fucking, I feel like I'm getting used here. But uh, you can avoid that. There's also girls that want to hook up right away. Just like they just want to have fun. Mm -hmm. And But you really have to navigate your way through the dating scene in Colombia. And now that there's more gringos there, there's a little bit more entitlement. But Colombia has some really fucking sexy girls. Like, you'll walk around Medellin and just be like, damn, damn, damn. How would you... You have to spend time in Medellin. Like, if you're going to go to Medellin, go there for as long as you can. Like, at least 30 days. Because you're going to have to go on multiple dates. And you might... 
I don't know if I should say this, but you might need to fucking lie and be like, oh, yeah, I'm about to live here. That, that always works. I mean, <laughs> that always works. See, for me, I can say that because I, I go places with no return ticket. Like, I came to Paraguay, and I'm like, yeah, I'm living here. And they, a lot of chicks didn't believe me. It might end up coming true just because you say it to so many people, like, yeah, I'm thinking about living here. Mm -hmm. But no girl wants to hear, like, I'm a gringo, and I'm here for vacation. Especially in a big city where there are a shit ton of gringos there. Like, you need to be kind of a local. Yeah. and It they, used to not be like that. The first trip I went there. But if you stay, so how long would you say somebody should stay in Medellin, Colombia to what you call navigate through the dating scene there to get the best out of it? You need 30 days. It's going to take you two weeks just to get late. Really? It, it, I've talked to other dudes like that have, are going there now and it's just getting harder. What? But it is better than dating in Miami. Okay. Because in Miami, you'll get a girl with that fucking same attitude but she's like 30 years old at least you have a shot of like a nice you know 22 year old girl in medellin but these they're, yeah, they're building an attitude there in medellin too oh yeah you don't get requests for like certain places like we should go to this restaurant or we should go like i said it was you know five years ago my dude would just tell girls like hey can you just come over to my apartment there's not really any restaurants around here <laughs> like did you date that's night and day different what other cities did you date in in Colombia? Um, man, I checked out Bogota. I went to Cali. I went to Cartagena, but that was just like a weekend thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't really date around. I went there just to go see like a specific girl. Mm -hmm. And you like Medellin the best for dating? Medellin has the hottest chicks in Colombia. If you go anywhere else, you're going to be like, I don't know. Like there's people that like Bogota, but every time I've I've stepped into Bogota for a couple of days for like a layover or whatever. You'll walk around and you're like, these chicks are, are these chicks even Colombian? Like they look like Peruvian or something. Like they look ugly. Wow. So what would you, would you say that dating in Medellin is still worth it with all the dangers that's going on right now? I mean, it depends. If you're going to Medellin, you're most likely the type of like entrepreneur bro who's like trying to network with a bunch of like, you know, tech guys and, and guys with online businesses and shit like that because medellin has it has all those gringos so you can have a network of gringos with you and it's a really nice city like it's a beautiful fucking place with the mountains and and the culture is vibrant there the the pice of people are just they're just warm and they're friendly it's fun it's a vibe there okay okay so the next country you've been to brazil how many cities have you been to in brazil Brazil is where I realized, like, fuck this, like, staying in one city thing. Like, I'm going to go everywhere. And I went to five different places. I went to, I started in Rio. Like, when you go to Brazil, you're going to have to do Rio first to get your, I don't know if this is necessarily true. Everyone says this, like, you need to go to Rio. So it's like a starter city. Like, I don't know. I guess you could probably do the same thing in, like, Recife or something, you know? You but, think so? I guess for me, I've already traveled. I was, you know, I was in Colombia and I studied Portuguese before I went. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the main thing. Like you go to Rio so you can get the training wheels of like, oh, I don't know Portuguese. Mm -hmm. That is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And even in Rio, it, it's still, it's not a lot of people that know English in Rio from what I've seen. No, you're already fucked anyway. Yeah, so you're, you, you have to know Portuguese going. That's why you've I'm got Google going Translate there. if you're really screwed. Like, yeah. If you travel, man, you're going to have to be resourceful, bro. Like, point at shit. Like, I want that. Give me that. Mm. But um, I went to Rio first. I stayed in Rio. I went for Carnival. That was my first experience. Um, and at first, I didn't like Rio because I was coming from Medellin where all the chicks have that, like, doll face. And they're all young and pretty. And you go to Rio and they're a little bit older. And you got, like, a more of a varied uh, beauty standard there. Like, mm -hmm. You have like a fat chick next to a stunner on the beach and you're like, what the fuck? There's a bunch of ugly yeah. chicks here. But then I started dating there and I was like, oh, these dude, Brazilian girls, I don't want to talk shit, but this is, uh, this is a good thing is they're just, you go on a date there, they're more likely to want to hook up. Mm -hmm. Like the three date thing is probably not going to happen in Brazil, bro. Like, no, I'm and not, I'm not I, trying to offend Brazilians or anything. They know that like kissing is like a big deal there. Mm -hmm. Like during carnival, they, they all just like make out at the club and they're just, 
that's a good thing. I don't see it as a bad thing. I right? like it. They like to hook up, man. So, and that was refreshing coming from Medellin where I'm like, is this girl a hooker? Uh, are we, is it going to take me three dates to hook up with her? You know what I mean? And then it changed my mind on Brazil. And I was like, I'm fucking staying here. So what would you say was your favorite part of dating in Brazil? Like, what, what was it? Was it the kissing? Was it the quick hookups? Was it the femininity? Was it the beauty? Well, it was really fun to learn Portuguese because mm -hmm. I had already known Spanish. And, like, I, I, like, nerd out on that shit. Like, people act like it's a chore, but I'm like, I need to know what this is and this grammar rule and, like, how do you say this? And, like, I like to, to pick it apart. And you learn, you learn Portuguese. You get to try. It, actually, Brazil, like... It is a surprise when you get there because who knows anything about Brazilian culture? It's not like Mexican culture or Colombian culture where you've heard the music before, you've seen movies and like you're warmed up to it. When you go to Brazil, you're like, what is this fucking pagogi music and fucking mm -hmm. funky and all this yeah. shit? Yeah. It's a surprise, man. And the people don't look like what you think when you get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like this looks like we're in the States. There's like black people asians fucking white people with blue eyes mm -hmm. especially if you go further south in brazil they get a they they they're way more exotic but like you said white people with blue eyes in florianapolis and porto alegre and brazilians are uh extroverted like they have no filter that's that's the one thing i liked about it like if they get mad they're gonna be mad if they're fucking excited they'll get mm -hmm. excited if they want to kiss you they'll kiss you mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. don't hold back which is kind of fun Yes, I 100% agree with that. That's, Brazil is still my number one uh, worldwide, no matter what happened or anything like that. It's still a very, very great place to be at. So you've been to Paraguay as well. How would you describe dating here in Paraguay? Man, Paraguay almost felt like it was a, um, like a mix. Because mm -hmm. like, it's at the crossroads of like a bunch of different countries. We're literally surrounded by like five different countries mm -hmm. so you got argentinians here you got brazilians um you have germans here and fucking korean people which was mm -hmm. crazy um the girls here are really humble mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you, you don't have to worry about the sugar baby thing like colombia mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're worry. not as eager to hook up i guess i, I don't want to say this in like any offensive way but like <laughs> Uh, they're not you might have to go on two or three dates you're not you're not fucking first date for but the part. yeah but and it, they have they listen to brazilian music here mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. eat brazilian food mm -hmm. they might have like relatives that are brazilian mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot so, of brazilians here sometimes i forget we're even in paraguay it's a melting pot it's a boring place which is good for dating i think because you don't have to deal with like the friend group the fucking concerts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not much other to do at dudes, all. Yeah. So yeah, you you get a. It's more for I would say it's more for expert level travelers. I wouldn't put this as a first time out of the country travel place. You'll I, be bored. You'll be yeah. You need some. You need a place like Santiago, Rio, or Medellin where there's a lot of action outside of women. This is like being in, like. <sighs> Cleveland, Ohio or something. Yeah, I could, I could see that. It, it's like being in a small, yeah, a, a major city with nothing really to do. We got like two malls. Yeah, yeah. But it's nice. There's enough restaurants and like uh, rooftops and shit. The girls here though, you could, like if you want a girlfriend, like a loyal girlfriend who treats you like a real man, like you'll find them in Paraguay. Absolutely, absolutely. I would 100% agree. So... Out of the four countries you've been to in Latin America so far, what would you put as your number one for dating as an American? For me, mm -hmm. I don't think this is for everybody because people say, you know, have different opinions about it. Um, Brazil. Mm -hmm. Brazil is the most fun and it's big. Mm -hmm. and it's big. Mm -hmm. Brazil isn't really like one country. That's, that's a giant place like the size of the United States. Yeah. It's a completely different culture in Salvador versus Porto Alegre. Brazil is one of those places where I want to go to like all the different cities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like living, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I could live in Rio. 
I could live there, but after experiencing all the other cities and you want to be around less gringos, you want more Brazilian culture, I would I would rather live in Florianapolis or Porto Alegre or something like that. You know, I I think I would rather live in like a medium sized city. If yeah. it's like you gotta stay here for a year because a big ass place like Rio is expensive and people have that big city attitude and people live far away from the beach. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I would agree with you on that as well. Uh, Brazil is my number one country still in Latin America for dating. I still recommend you guys start there first. Do not come to places like Paraguay or Uruguay if you're not a, if you're not an expert level traveler and you don't know how to occupy your free time because you will get bored in these places very soon. I mean, it's more stuff to do in Uruguay than it is Paraguay. Uh, but I would say that you, Par Uruguay, you'll be bored throughout the week and on the weekend, you may be a little more busy. For me, my number one country is still Brazil. My last country for me, and I'd have to retry it again, it would be Argentina. 